then hi everyone. Um, thank you here for your nice talk uh, concerning the Emacs uh, GC. We have some questions on the pad, and maybe before I would like to ask you something to the last one you have said uh, concerning changing the GC strategy. That it's is unlikely that it will be happening in the next time. Yeah, is there any discussion going on, or why it is the case that it's not changing the strategy? Well, it's mostly because it's difficult. I think uh, yesterday you heard from uh, one of the dev talks that mm. like there was one small short comment that oh yeah, it would be nice to change GC algorithm, but it's it's hard. So okay. I mean, it's, it's hard not because the algorithm is that hard, but because it's a very low level code and it must mm -hmm. be like very carefully weighted. So like it, may, like it needs to may be made sure that like everything will work without bugs. Yeah. Like if you have bugs and you can see that's all, nothing will work anymore. <laughs> so we have a lot of RAM usage. Yeah, maybe sometime. Yeah. That's the case. Uh, there was a, like years ago there was a branch on generational DC. If I remember correctly, but they didn't go anywhere, unfortunately. That's a pity. That's a pity. Um, but let's come to the questions on the pad. So the first mm -hmm. one is: um, Are the GC duration statistics correlated with users? I mean, does the same user experience GC of various durations, or do some users experience GC of a greater zero point two six exclusively, where others never experience? Um, them so is it correlated to user behavior i guess you said it in your talk a little well, bit. If, if if you talk formally then almost every user has like one or two occasions when gc takes more than 0 0.2 seconds but it's like maybe something else is using cpu and that, that's why but uh in practice there are users who don't have problem like half of them that that's that's what i looked from statistics uh and uh, there are users who have like really big problems, like one second GC time. Is this dependent mm -hmm. on, um, you, you make some comments on it in the talk, but could you like extract on if it's a package, that's the problem or really the user behavior? Are there? Uh, <clears throat> usually it's uh, like uh, something that is like, okay, I, I'm sharing my screen now, right? Uh, it's coming on. Give it like yeah. two to three seconds. Yeah. So I can I can just uh, click through different user statistics. So like you can see this is a GC duration mm -hmm. uh, for each individual user basically. So you can see like here, for example, it's uh, like averages around zero point twenty five seconds, yeah. which is noticeable. And here it's like zero point one. Like for someone is all over the place, probably some. So then, uh, like, what else can we see here? Yeah, you know, some users like have sub zero point one second, no, not mm. no problem at all. And I have seen some that really, really bad. Mm. I mean, if it's noticeable, it's all bad. So yeah, for example, here. Oh, phew. it's like zero point eight seconds, zero point five seconds. I, I, I don't know how how, how that guy <laughs> uses Emacs. Yeah, that, that that's bad. So, so you can see it varies. It varies. Yeah, a lot. it varies quite a lot. Yeah. What it depends on, like usually the number of packages, like hmm? all kinds of timers going on under the hood. Uh, I think I, I tried to list. Um, oh, let me go through this. I briefly outlined uh, some important parts. Yeah, here, like when you have something like org, org agenda, it will most likely trigger a lot of GCs. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a lot of timers. But when you have some like, something calculated on mod line, it will be like frequently triggered. Well, yeah. Like, when you have so many packages and uh, when these packages are using a lot of memory, mm -hmm. uh, like I remember, I was surprised by this uh, package uh, Helm org that was uh, caching uh, all the results, and for large org files, it was like uh, several hundred megabytes of data. Well, okay. No wonder GC becomes slower. Yeah. Yeah. 
maybe, maybe a short side note, someone asks uh, what software you're using for flipping through the PNGs. Maybe you could shortly throw it in. Uh, what do you mean, uh, here, this? I guess this was just simply, uh, yeah. It's, it's far, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm -mm. So, question, can uh, this, question one and two answered. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can probably stop sharing my screen for now. Yep. Yeah, that was the right or the wrong. Um, to one statement you have made, there was a question concerning the timings. So you said, okay, everything above 0 0.1 second is fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe here's a short story of a of, so, of someone who asked the question. Oh, I, I see the question is about scrolling, yeah. right? Exact, uh, oh, exact again, this, this not much you can do in terms of like trying to adjust uh, the GC time. I mean, if you in, if you make GCs less frequent, you you increase the uh, individual GC time. In, if you make them more frequent, you decrease the individual GC time. But then they are more frequent, so the, what is the point? I think the way to go here is uh, you can raise GC threshold uh, for the duration of scrolling. Like just for a comment, I, I think it's a recommendation from uh, from uh, Emacs devs. So uh, like you do something along the lines. Something like yeah, ten times. And then, Are you doing uh, something on your screen or? Yeah, I'm surely doing something on my screen and I forgot that I am not sure anything. Exactly. <laughs> Simply something like this. So basically, if you have something, some command that is, it's very important that it should run very quickly. You temporarily increase uh, the threshold. You run that command, then that's all. That's probably the best. So basically, the best you can do is to delay it after <laughs> to after the moment. So afterwards, it takes a lot a lot of time to do it stuff. <laughs> mm. Okay. Um, the third one has been already answered, but I just want to uh, get your um, your information from it. Uh, opinions on the GCMH mode. Okay. Uh yeah, I, I see that problem, but that's more like a technical problem. But there's another problem there. Uh, yeah, I, I prepared a small snippet here. <laughs> so if you look at the GCMH sharing. mode, it has this concept of uh, low threshold and high threshold. And most of the time it's running high threshold. And then uh, like when Emacs is idle, it uh, falls back to lower threshold and then it does the GC when while well, Emacs is not used. That's the good idea, of course. That's the, the core idea of uh, GCMH mode. Unfortunately, the most annoying GC is when you actively use Emacs and then you have this huge value of GC control and look at the doc stream. Uh, this would be a value that makes GC unlikely but does not cause OS pagian. So yeah, no wonder. Like if you don't do GC, your ARM usage will will like skyrocket. So they don't, they cannot put it too much. Uh, but this is uh, this is like already like how much was it? One gigabyte. That's the default. And the problem is when you have a like one gigabyte to garbage collect, it causes really long GC time. So in GCMH mode, when you're actually using Emacs like really heavily, the GCs are become terrible, terribly slow. So it may help in case you don't have too much problems with GC, but I would say that in such situation, you can simply increase GC cost percentage, as I recommend, and it should do it. But uh, in ca in case of really big problems with garbage collection, no, I don't think that will help much. I, I used it myself, and it didn't help much for myself. All right. 
Um, the next question is concerning um, freeing up memory. Um, is there some way to free up memory such as via unload feature on Emacs? Often I only need a package loaded for a single task or short period, but it persists in memory afterwards. So the packages are usually not that much of a problem. I mean, the, the libraries. The problem is some extra, like some variable contents, or some histories, or some caches. That's what's eating most of the memory. Uh, there is a package called the memory usage and uh, built in uh, MX uh, memory report. Uh, they allow to see which variables take a lot of memory. And uh, that way you can try to see which, pa which packages are actually problematic. So, for example, uh, I recall, and that was not exactly, I, uh, yeah, I remember there was a package that was littering uh, command line, uh, like, yeah, prompt history. I think it was uh, in demand. And uh, when you do like every, when you save every message in your chart into prompt history, that can grow very like very fast, and uh, like can go to several hundred megabytes just in that history, and that can cause major problems. So, uh, yes, profiling the largest variables with the largest buffers that uh, might give some clues. Again, there is no silver bullet. Right. Um, I think the last question on the pad is, uh, at first, very nice presentation. I can also um, only agree with that. Um, I just experienced with the threshold and lowered my GC labs from 1.1 to 0 0.06 seconds during startup. Interestingly, going to 10 megabytes increased the time. 4 megabytes was a sweet spot for my system. What is the recommended way to lower the value back to the default value after startup is completed? I think you just use after init hook. This was a relatively fast answer. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, for example, Doom does this. It temporarily rises uh, GC threshold during startup. And uh, yeah, after init hook, is, he, the code is like, it's one of the commonly suggested uh, approaches, and it's, I believe it's the right one. All right. Um, to have joined us, one was a microphone. So, Peter, do you have any questions that you want to question? And maybe as a side note, we only have four minutes left, and afterwards, this happy weekend still be open, but we would switch back um, to the talks. Yeah, no, no quest, no more questions on um, on garbage collection. But I just wanted to thank Ihor for uh, his engagement in the community. And uh, especially with, I'm, I'm a ma co-maintainer on OrgNoder, and he's helped us a lot with um, getting us uh, up to date with newer versions of Org and stuff like that. So just want to thank you in person, All right? Thanks a lot. Um, maybe one question for me. You had some a bit talked about memory fragmentation. So of the. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to, or is it fixed by Emacs itself? So it's, uh, you have like this no, chunk of memory. Memory fragmentation is, is, is basically your OS. So yeah, yeah. Emacs releases the memory, and then OS can rearrange it depending okay, on so the implementation of its uh, like memory manager. OK, so the GC just releases it really and not. So it could be also that the Emacs is like yeah. doing it itself. On OS level, you have like memory pages, right? And uh, GC can release uh, part of these pages like here and there. And depending on the exact situation with your ARM at e each moment of time, OS may or may not be able to arrange things. So, so it's how, really... like, the exact details, like, you cannot really predict it. It really varies. Like, you use Windows, you use Linux, you use like Malloc, some other, something else. But it's, it has nothing to do with Emacs. It's just something you have to deal with. Yeah, but my question was, um, was in the way that we are giving the memory back to the operating system, not just holding it as used and then do our own memory like stuff uh, as Emacs that we do not need to interact with the operating system. Yeah, Emacs does not really hold anything. 
Thank you. Okay. That was the question. Okay. I, I was really hoping it does, but yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, it's not, because nothing really much can be done on the max side. Be probably a lot uh, faster if it's just holding it, and when it needs more, then just get more from the OS. But okay. well, there are certain caveats. For example, uh, this something called image cache. And uh, because Emacs stores images in uncompressed format, it, it can occupy quite a lot of memory. In particular, when you like view PDFs, like you open 10, like 20 PDFs uh, in one uh, session, you, you may have like some image cache blowing up, but uh, that's not common for all people. Yeah. So I guess we are on our time exactly. So in the next couple Oh yeah, wait, I, I think I was not exactly accurate. This, uh, this one comment, which is added, I think, in Emacs 30, is called a malloc trim. Emacs malloc trim is interactive. So that can help to release some memory. I, I think the way it works is like forces OS to, uh, to make use of the released memory. OK. That would be uh, like. We are, by the way, switch back to the next talk. Um, oh, yeah, so, but so basically, what happens here is that OS may not release, oh, like even Emacs says, okay, this memory is free, depending on the implementation. OS may think, okay, but I still hold that the memory associated with Emacs, just in case Emacs needs more memories, then I can immediately uh, put the data there without uh, like more arrangement to allocate more. And this kind malloc stream basically forces the OS to release it, uh, like no matter what. Because most people, when they are using Emacs, I have the feeling they are only using Emacs. So it would be kind of interesting if you just take like I don't know two gigabytes or something of uh, memory and Emacs like does what it wants on that, and the OS cannot really take it back. This was be my idea when. Oh, I'm so when you see two gigabytes in OS, it doesn't mean that OS cannot take it back. It may still uh, like allocate certain portion, even technically free, but just for future oh, allocation. Yeah, yeah. Future. Mm -hmm. So this is why malloc team works. It's like it says, uh, yes, oh, yes, I'm really not going to hold this for this uh, free memory, for sure. Yeah. So <laughs> it, it, if you try this MX malloc team, you will see like a few times to hundreds of megabytes uh, freed immediately. Have a look when I have the time. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. I guess if nobody has any questions, I guess on the pads there was nothing else. I guess we can just close it. Thanks for the discussion. Thanks for the answering the questions. <clears throat> Thank you for the great conference. And yeah, for your volunteer work. <laughs> yeah, for quietly panicking in the background, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs>